Fox News has seen some shakeups recently, most of which have been part of the fallout from defamation suits filed against the network. In Brian Steltzer's new book, Network of Lies, The Epic Saga of Fox News, Donald Trump, and the Battle for American Democracy, he claims that Fox News host Janine Pirro was called a reckless maniac by her own executive producer. Let me ask you a question. When you're on the air, do you, do you have a couple drinks before you go on? Never. Because I watched you one time and you were slurring your words a little bit. I was never slurring my words. On, when you were on your show, on Judge Jeannie, you were slurring your words a little bit. But that's what we like about it. We, we're like, it's funny. This is what's fun about the show. You see saying that I was slurring my words. Well, just you've had a couple You just had a couple of, drinks. Uh, that, that's no? why we watched What's the show. your name? After being named in the Dominion lawsuit for repeating false information regarding the 2020 presidential election on her Fox News show, Justice with Judge Janine, Pirro lost her show and became one of the five co-hosts on the highly rated and highly viewed show, The Five. Pirro has gone viral time and time again for her on-screen rant. This guy has been lying from the moment he came on the political scene. He has a lack of empathy. He is egocentric. He's got a condescending smirk whenever anybody asks him a question from the press. He's lying and he's narcissistic. And you know what? It's not, he's not trying to make it feel like he's part of their misery. He's a narcissist and an egomaniac who's trying to make it about himself. And you need to find some safe middle ground where people know that the vaccine is safe for you, oh. but you don't, oh, well, what do you mean? You look, you're fine. You're vaccinated. What do you, oh, <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> It's your, it's your segment. I don't care. It's I'm, a just conversation. I'm just here for the fun. <laughs> She's highly right wing and loyal to Trump, even for Fox News. And she has been parodied quite a bit. Cecily Strong on SNL does her portraying Pirro as a drunk news anchor who can't not yell everything she says. The Daily Show had a bit called Daily Affirmations with Fox News' Janine Pirro, which I don't recommend for anyone actually trying to improve their self-worth. And she famously got into an argument with Whoopi Goldberg when she was a guest on The View. After the segment was taped or aired, um, Whoopi Goldberg went insane. She used foul mouth language I can't repeat mm -hmm. on television and Not told on this show you to cannot. get. No, and told her to get out of the beep building and just absolutely was unhinged. Beyond that, Pirro has said some actually dangerous things throughout her television career. Just to give you an example, her rhetoric regarding immigrants during the pandemic was likened to xenophobic Nazi propaganda. She's also been known to peddle the Great Replacement Theory. And after all of that, it was being named in the Dominion suit for making false and defamatory claims against the voting machines that really backfired against her. After they created four years of chaos, accusing Trump of sowing doubt in our democracy, saying that his questioning of this election is a danger to America, as if the election process being changed in the middle of an election is no big deal, as if a little fraud is okay and they lash out on any voting challenge, casting it as a temper tantrum by us. Really? We're the ones having the temper tantrum? Despite being moved to a highly rated and highly viewed show, she still lost her own show. She was essentially demoted, despite the network's efforts to publicly portray the move as a positive for Piero. With the move, instead of only working once a week, Piero was made to work five days a week. Also, she was no longer able to deliver her opening monologue where she could and would say whatever she felt like saying, nor was she able to choose her own guests. And of course, as the name would imply, on The Five, she would have to share the spotlight and airtime with four other hosts. According to sources, this all happened because Pura was so difficult to work with and manage while she had her own show. Allegedly, she was known to cry censorship whenever producers would suggest edits to her monologue. And as I'm sure anyone who's familiar with Pirro knows, she was prone to sensationalizing and that is putting it kindly. In a way, it was a win-win for the network. 
Fox News was able to wrangle Pirro while keeping up appearances. Even Pirro was able to land a spot on the top show in cable news and access a much larger audience just by being terrible at her job. White supremacy, that's the problem. This is a hoax. There's no evidence that white supremacists were responsible for what happened on January 6th. That's a lie. We have a moral obligation to admit the world's poor, they tell us, even if it makes our own country poorer and dirtier and more divided. Demographics. Demographic. Demographics. Demographics. Demographic. Remember the Great Replacement Theory? Was it a conspiracy theory? It sounds more like a statistical fact. Ilhan Omar is living proof that the way we practice immigration has become dangerous to this country. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, herself a symbol of America's failed immigration system. Can a single human being actually be as loathsome as Ilhan Omar is? It's hard to believe. And that was Tucker Carlson on a good day. These are just a few of the insane comments Carlson made during his time at Fox News. But on Tuesday afternoon, more previously secret court filings emerged from Fox's defamation case. And they show an even more sadistic Tucker Carlson than many people imagined. Here's Tucker. A couple of weeks ago, I was watching a video of people fighting on the street in Washington. A group of Trump guys surrounded an Antifa kid and started pounding the living out of him. It was three against one at least. Jumping a guy like that is dishonorable, obviously. It's not how white men fight. Wait, what? Yet suddenly I found myself rooting for the mob against the man, hoping they'd hit him harder. Kill him. I really wanted them to hurt the kid. I could taste it. Then somewhere deep in my brain, an alarm went off. This isn't good for me. I'm becoming something I don't want to be. Let's pause right there for a second. Because the one thing this shows is two things. First, Tucker is actually rooting for the murder of someone he disagrees with politically. And he seems to get quite a kick out of it. And second, Tucker knows what he's doing is wrong. He just doesn't care that much. And let's take just one more beat and go back to the beginning, when Tucker says that mob violence is, in his words, not how white men fight. So, in case you're confused, Tucker didn't believe the 2020 election was actually stolen but he definitely seems to believe in right-wing race theory. Tucker loves to imagine himself as some modern-day Alexander Hamilton, a new founding father fighting a second war of independence against the libs. He believes there is some kind of honor in the brutality of MAGA political violence. But seeing it up close, even Tucker seems to briefly realize the dark reality he's enabled is nothing like his Hollywood fantasies. Tucker continues, I shouldn't gloat over his suffering. I should be bothered by it. I should remember that somewhere, somebody probably loves this kid and would be crushed if he was killed. Should? Tucker, healthy people don't need to constantly remind themselves to not take joy in mob violence. There is something deeply troubling in these texts. For Tucker Carlson, MAGA violence has just become another thing to watch on YouTube while brushing his teeth. And not only is he not concerned by the violence, he's excited by it and he wants to see more. For years, Tucker Carlson used the biggest platform in television to indoctrinate his followers into his mob violence fantasies. Now, Tucker would never be part of a violent mob, but he has no problem striking the match that leads to political violence in others. Now that he's been cut loose from Fox News, Tucker is already amping up the conspiracy talk to 11. Just look at this clip, apparently shot in Tucker's guest room, where Tuck Tuck shares his thoughts on, of all things, 9-11. If you go on TV tonight and say, I think the earth is flat, people will just laugh at you. They don't care if you think the earth is flat. It's not a threat to anyone. But if you say like, what what actually happened with building seven? Like that is weird, right? It doesn't, like what right, is that? Right. If you were to say something like that on television, they'd flip out. They would flip out. So you'd like lose your job over that. Why? Why? It's my hmm. country. Right. Is an attack on my country? Can I ask it? Like, I don't really understand. Do buildings actually collapse? No, they, maybe they do. I don't know. The truth is, everyone at a leadership role at Fox knew this was who Tucker Carlson always was. And they were just fine keeping him on the payroll until all of their dirty laundry came out in court. Tucker's firing has nothing to do with ethics and everything to do with protecting Fox's shareholders. And for the media networks that make up the far-right brain rot extended universe, Tucker's racism and love of violence isn't a problem, it's a bonus. Now those networks are scrambling over each other to make Tucker insane offers, including this one for an eye-watering $100 million over five years. Here's what our offer is. 
we're willing to make a on record. I'll be tweeting this right after I'm done here. Uh, and it'll be on Twitter. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on all over the place. A hundred million dollar five-year offer equity position in the company, a president position and a board seat to make decisions on what we want to do with docs, movies, specials, any other shows, and whatever else he wants to talk about. Podcast, show, all of it on OTT. But that is an offer we're making to Tucker. Tucker knows how to get a hold of me. Yeah, OTT founder Patrick Bet David is offering Tucker his own media empire, an unchecked power to pump out as much propaganda as his twisted little heart desires. But OTT isn't alone. Election-denying pillow man Mike Lindell is also trying to score himself some Tucker. Take a look. You look at what... Tucker and them, they can't say on those networks. And by the way, Brandon, I've reached out to both of them. I text them both, both Dan Bogino and Tucker, and said, hey, you're welcome over here at Lindell TV at Frank's Beach. We would love to have them here as part of our team. Though I'll admit, it's unclear how Mike Lindell has been texting Tucker Carlson, since the FBI seized his cell phone as part of an ongoing investigation into, you know, overthrowing democracy. Everything about Tucker Carlson should disqualify him from ever working in the media again. But unfortunately, hate speech pays really well. 